Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we are moving into Unit 4, Section 5 of AP Chemistry, which is about reaction stoichiometry. Now, of all the sections and topics that AP Chemistry covers, there are some sections that are very short that can be covered in just a couple of minutes. However, this is one of those sections that's going to take several videos to get through because reaction stoichiometry is a very important topic in uh, in all of chemistry, to be honest. And so we're going to start in this first video about the basics and the fundamentals of carrying out a reaction stoichiometry problem. Now, when we carry out one of these problems and we're converting quantities of substances in a reaction, there are three steps that you want to, to keep in mind. The first step is convert to moles. Now, if you've forgotten how to do this or never learned how to do this very well, you can go all the way back to Unit 1, Section 1, where we uh, first started talking about how to convert to moles. Now, once you do that, the second part of this is the mole ratio. Now, we've learned about mole ratios before, but in this part, or in this section, when we talk about a balanced equation, the numbers for the mole ratio are going to be derived directly from the coefficients of the balanced equation. We're going to see several examples of that. Now the third step is convert to final unit. Usually the problem asks us to, to find a value that's not moles, and so it, it, perhaps it's grams or molecules or atoms. In that case we have to convert in this third step and convert to that final unit whatever it might be. If the final unit that we are being asked for is moles, then I guess we don't have to do this third step. But most of the time, we are going to have to do that. This is what I call our three-step process for reaction stoichiometry. So we're going to do a couple examples here and see how this works. So in this first problem, copper reacts with nitric acid to create the brown toxic gas nitrogen dioxide. And there's the equation for that. If a chemist desires to produce 1.00 grams of nitrogen dioxide gas, what mass of copper metal should be dropped into excess nitric acid? Well, the first thing that you want to do is balance the equation. This only works if we have a balanced chemical equation. So we can balance the equation, and now we're able to actually work the problem. So notice that the question says we're trying to produce 1.00 grams of nitrogen dioxide. So I'm going to write that down. That's what we're, we're starting with in our problem. And the question is asking us to determine the mass of copper metal. So that's grams of copper. So way down here at the end, I'm trying to convert to grams of copper. Now, we're going to go through our three-step process. Step one is convert to moles. So whenever we're converting from grams to moles, we start by putting grams on the bottom, because that's the unit that we're trying to get rid of. And since we're converting to moles, moles need to go on the top. So one mole on top. Now, how many grams are in one mole of nitrogen dioxide? Well, use the periodic table. Add up those individual atomic masses. Nitrogen is about 14, and each oxygen is about 16, so that adds up to about 46.01 grams in a mole of that compound. We can cancel grams, top and bottom, and now we, we are ready for step two, which is the mole ratio. Now, like I said, instead of having units in this mole ratio, we're going to use uh, uh, substances from the equation. So since we're starting with NO2, I'm going to put NO2 on the bottom. That way it'll cancel out. And since I'm trying to convert to copper, I'm going to put copper on the top. Now remember, the numbers for the mole ratio are coming straight from the balanced equation, the coefficient. So next to copper, in the balanced equation, there's nothing there. So that's understood to be a 1. So I'll put a 1 right here. Next to NO2, there's a coefficient of 2. So I put a 2 right there. This is a 1 to 2 ratio. NO2 cancels out top and bottom. And now I'm in moles of copper, but I want to be in grams of copper. So that's why I have to do step 3, which is convert to final unit. And the final unit I'm converting to is grams. So in my last step, I have to put the 1 mole on the bottom, so moles will cancel and grams on top. How many grams are in one mole of copper? Well, we, once again, 
Look at the periodic table. The atomic mass of copper is 63.55 grams in one mole. So I can cancel moles, and now I can do the mathematics on my calculator. I just take 1.00 divided by 46.01 divided by 2 times 63.55. And when I get the answer, it is 0.691 grams of copper. So that's how you... Uh, solve these problems. Let's try another one. This one, it says potassium, like all the alkali metals, explodes violently when dropped into water, creating a metallic hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And there's the equation. A 2.35 gram sample of potassium metal is added to excess water. How many moles of hydrogen gas are expected to be produced? So once again, the very first thing we have to do is balance that equation because this only works if you have a balanced equation. So if I do this, now I have my balanced equation. So once again, I'm starting with 2.35 grams of potassium. So I write that down. And the question asks, how many moles of hydrogen gas? So this time at the end, I'm trying to solve for moles of hydrogen gas, H2. So let's go through our, our three steps. Step one is convert to moles. So I have to put grams on the bottom, and one mole goes on the top since I'm converting to moles. <clears throat> now how many grams are in a mole of potassium? Well, look at the periodic table. It's about 39.10. That's the atomic mass of potassium. So now I can cancel grams, and I'm in moles of potassium. Step two is the mole ratio. So my mole ratio, I'm going to put K, you know, potassium, on the bottom, so it'll cancel. And since I'm converting to H2, H2 has to go in the numerator. And the numbers for this mole ratio are drawn straight out of the balanced equation. So there's a 1 next to H2, so I'll put a 1 there. And there's a 2 next to potassium, so I'll put a 2 for that one. This is a 1 to 2 ratio. So cancel that out top and bottom. I'm in moles of hydrogen, and guess what? My goal is to be in moles of hydrogen, so I don't even have to do a third step this time. I'm already in that final unit. So now I just have to key these numbers into my calculator. I take 2.35 divided by 39.10 divided by 2, and I get the answer as 0 0.0301 moles of hydrogen. I hope this video has helped you to, uh, to solve some simple reaction stoichiometry problems. If this video has helped you, if you've enjoyed this, learned something from it, please smash that like button and leave a comment down below if you'd be so kind as to do so. That really helps the algorithm. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for uh, 24 years, something like that. In our next video, we're going to take a look at some other methods here and how we can take a look at problems called limiting reactant problems and percent yield. Hope to see you on that video. Thanks for watching.